Last time we spoke about how AI and machine learning are becoming more and more accessible to answer some essential business questions without the need for a programmer or high-end mathematician. We received a lot of questions about how much data someone actually needs to start running prediction models and how to avoid common mistakes in data collection for AI. What's exciting is that you don't need complex and big data to start running your own models. You can use your Google Analytics data or your CRM data or data collected from surveys from your users. And there are plenty of tools out there that can let you do this without coding. Microsoft Azure, IBM Watson, DataIQ, and plenty others. But one point that I brought up last time is that these tools are only as powerful as the quality of the data that you feed them. I'd like to expand on this. First and most important is the fact that you don't need big data to start running these models. If you have the right features influencing the right outcome, for example, time spent on page influencing conversions, you can start with just a few hundred rows in your data set. If you have the right type of feature, you can start small and build up in the future. So that was quantity of data. Secondly, I want to address the quality. If we, as marketeers, are not careful, every data that we collect can be subject to bias. There are many types of bias, but the two that I want to mention here are selection bias and exclusion bias. And both types can affect the usability and relevance of your AI models and findings. Let's break some of this down. Selection bias is when the group of people you selected for your data collection is different from your target audience. Some researchers at the University of Washington wanted to illustrate this point. They trained a model to tell the difference between husky dogs and wolves, but they only selected photos of husky dogs on grass and wolves on snow. The model was obviously very good at detecting snow versus grass, but not wolves versus huskies. This was to prove a point. Machine learning can feel like magic, but it's definitely not all powerful yet. Next, there's exclusion bias. Exclusion bias is when you've already collected your data, but you hold back bits of information from your analysis. We often rationalize this as cleaning our data, but sometimes we miss out on valuable insights, and we might be simply confirming our pre-existing beliefs. Imagine that we're looking at Google Analytics data for our website. Our target audience is in the Netherlands, but you have a few users in your system that are from France. You decide to exclude the users who are from France because there are so few of them. But had you looked closer, you would have realized that the users from France are actually spending more time on your site, going to more pages, and buying more. An AI model would have told you that. After all, in business, that's what AI is for. It reveals unexpected insights. And good data collection is driven by us knowing that we're subject to bias. So instead of only feeding a subset of your data to your machine learning model, dump it all in. If it's irrelevant, the machine will learn to ignore it. But if it's unexpectedly a factor for a trend, you'll be happy you left it in. So here are some main things I want to leave you with. First, you don't need big data, you just need medium data. Second, you don't need any coding, just a tool to do the heavy lifting. Third, make sure to try and avoid bias as much as possible when you're collecting data for AI. And fourth, the most important one, as always, the best way to learn AI is to just do it yourself.